J.D. Vance was born in Middletown 39 years ago, raised in his grandmother's home here on McKinley Street. His family came from East Central Kentucky, moving north to get higher paying manufacturing jobs at Middletown's then booming steel plant. Vance declined interviews, threw his Senate spokesman ahead of his selection, and so did his family members in Middletown. UC political science professor David Niven says Vance's ascent from such humble beginnings to VP candidate is remarkable. You know, I think the Vance story is is a fascinating one, and it is, you know, it's going to be in the uh, in the textbooks for a long time about you know, how one can create a political career almost overnight. Vance first shot into the national spotlight in 2016, when his memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, a memoir of a family and culture in crisis, hit bestseller lists. The book tracks his family's troubled history dating back to the Appalachian foothills of Kentucky, his mother's issues with opioid addiction, as well as his reasons for the economic decline of working class America. He also chronicled how he made it despite those tough odds, primarily through the tough love of his grandparents, especially his grandmother, Bonnie Maymaw Vance. In fact, he took his grandparents' last name after high school as a sign of respect. The book also says many of the problems facing the white working class are their own fault, with Vance writing the so-called hillbilly culture can sometimes be his own people's worst enemy. A 2020 Netflix movie based on his book included major stars such as Amy Adams and Glenn Close and was directed by Ron Howard. It came out a year before Vance threw his hat into the ring to run for the U.S. Senate. Vance was seen as an outsider and was not even leading the polls for most of the 2022 primary. That changed when Trump endorsed Vance, a surprising move given Vance strongly criticized Trump when promoting his book six years earlier. In fact, he called Trump an idiot and loathsome during the 2016 campaign. But thanks to that endorsement, Vance won first the GOP primary and then the Senate seat in 2022 and has since become a vocal advocate for Trump's policies. Cedarville University history professor Mark Clausen says it was both a political calculation, but also a realization by Vance that the two had more in common than they thought. He felt it expedient at the time, I think, to oppose Trump. And once Trump becomes more, once Trump becomes more popular, he finds it expedient to go with Trump. And that makes perfect sense to do that, to the best of your ability. In his first two years, Vance also bucked other traditional Republicans in the Senate, pushing for major railroad reforms following the disaster at East Palestine and calling for an end to the U.S. funding to Ukraine and its war against Russia. And he's mirrored Trump's positions on curbing free trade, once a big GOP policy position. Vance told me in May that he wasn't actively campaigning to be Trump's pick and that he had not yet spoken to the former president about it. Certainly, as I said, I think it's important that we reelect him. If you ask me, uh, I would certainly have to think about it seriously because I do want to help him and I want to help him govern the country successfully. I want to help him uh, become president. But I, I think that there, there's a really important role that I can play in the United States Senate. James Pilcher, Local 12 News. From breaking news to feel good stories, Local 12 has it all. Tap subscribe and click the links for more content like this.